Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today I did something I really never thought I would do. I deleted our second most popular video. Why did I do that? It got demonetized. So all those ads that you sit through, we're not supporting the channel. So I wanna fix that so that that money, that time you spend goes back into supporting Recordology and bringing cool equipment and things for us to review. So I've decided to make some changes, including a new intro and outro, which you're watching now. And I wanna tell you guys, that I very much appreciate you being there for you watching these videos. For a time, this was our number one video. I mean, we were approaching a quarter of a million views on this thing. So hopefully we can build back up to that. But it was the number one video until it was eclipsed by the Victrola suitcase player. So it's a very popular video. And Victrola partnered with us when we only had 47 subs to produce this video back in 2017. They were the very first ones to help support the channel. So I'm very indebted to them for that. I appreciate it very much. And this is a great product. So check out this video. You're not gonna wanna miss this. I am the Edison Phonograph. The more you become acquainted with me, the better you will like me. Ask the dealer. Welcome back to Recordology. Okay, this is gonna be really, really fun. We have before us a Victrola phonograph and we are going to unbox it and review it. So let's go ahead and start using our razor. Not going too deep. We don't want to damage what's inside. We don't know how it's packed yet. So being very gentle with that. Just kind of perforating the edges so we can rip open the rest. Oh yeah, I already see something good. Victrola logo. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that. Okay, so it's actually another whole box. So, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Victrola. Six-in-one turntable. Three-speed turntable, 33 and a third, 45, 78. CD player, cassette player, Bluetooth. FM radio with analog tuner, aux input, built-in stereo speakers. Just look at that. Even the box is beautiful. Oh, even the packaging is just like high quality. I can tell you already this is going to be good stuff just from the packaging. When a company takes pride in their packaging, you know that they take pride in the, the product as well. Okay. Just beautiful. That, my friends, is a thing of beauty. So, in the box, we have an owner's manual, and it looks like um, some sort of audio lead. I'm gonna open that up. Yep. So we got RCA stereo audio cable find out exactly what that's for. Um, here's the owner's manual. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay guys, I'm already super impressed. It has the automatic standing lid. We got some spacers for protecting the turntable and some instructions regarding setting it up and unlocking it. They ship with it in a locked position to protect the mechanism. We got our 45 RPM spacer right there. High quality looking turntable, stylus. We've got the gentle lowering mechanism, which is super excited. Always wanted to have one of those. Yeah, we'll give it a test here in a little bit. Okay, so looking at the back here, we've got the um, plug wrapped up in this plastic, protective plastic. So we're we'll going to tear that off. I always end up getting these things in a knot like that. But you can just tear it apart with your hand. Maybe. And then there'll be the little uh, protector thing on there. And then a twist tie around there. 
And you just kind of open it up, plug it in. There's also a wire sticking out the back here. This is the FM antenna. So normally you can sort of unravel this gently and just drape it down the back of wherever you're setting the uh, stereo system. But yeah, that is your FM antenna, which you know you can adjust to get better reception depending on what area you're in. On the back here, uh, you got the typical warnings, and then here is your line out. Um, so if you want to connect it to a larger stereo system, you can do that. And that's what we're going to use the audio leads that they sent, the RCA cables left and right, if you want to do that. It's optional because it has built-in speakers, but um, plug it in right there, left and right. And I would say, you know, looking at this, you know, I can already tell this is a very high quality unit. Um, the labels, um, just kind of the overall manufacture of it, it seems very high quality. And a lot of times, um, one of the best ways, in my opinion, to tell the quality of a product sometimes is with, you know, looking at the back, you know, is it finished on the back? You'll see this is finished in the same finish that the top and the front is. And to me that, you know, indicates that it is a quality product, that they took the time, because it does cost more money, to stain and finish the back, even though it's rarely seen. Um, you'll also see this notch up here. This is very common for these types of players. Um, that's where the, it just gives a little bit of room for large records to stick out the back without having to have the unit be so deep. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's the back of the unit. And, um, you know, just looking at the little, little details here, you know, this is not just a drilled hole. This has actually got a grommet around it. The types of hinges that are up here. It does seem very high quality. Even something as simple as the way that the wood is assembled is something that's important to look for. I mean, look at this. You're seeing, you know, that this is assembled. This isn't all cut from one piece. These are individual trim pieces and framing pieces that are joined together. And to me, again, this speaks of high quality. You'll see how this is black and this is brown. This is the finished surface. This is the unfinished surface. So they even went through the, the uh, you know, the, the time and the expense to have it stained. So that's a black stain to seal the wood, which protects it. But see how the quality construction there? To me, that speaks volumes for the overall quality of the product. Okay, here's the tape player on the side. Uh, this little white outline here actually is supposed to be the outline of the shape of a cassette, a compact cassette tape. So you just stick it in there and it takes it like that. And you'll notice this button sticks out when you do that. If you push it halfway, that is fast forward. If you push it all the way, it's eject. And then the tape just comes back out like that. You'll notice that on this and all modern tape players that there's nothing about Dolby anymore. The reason for that is that Dolby no longer licenses its decoding technology. So no tape players that are manufactured today have it. However, if you have recorded uh, quality cassette tapes as I have, and they were recorded in Dolby, or for, for another example would be uh, professionally pre-recorded compact cassettes um, that are recorded in Dolby B. Don't worry because these tape players, even without the Dolby, will play them at a very high quality rate. So the reason being, a, a tape that's recorded in Dolby has a high bias and therefore will sound brighter on a tape player that doesn't have Dolby decoding technology. Okay, so here's the front panel of the unit. Um, I really like the style of how they've designed this. I love the knobs. You'll see sort of these vintage knobs that look like something off of an old car, radio perhaps, or maybe a vintage plane. The whole front panel here is a glossy surface. It's highly reflective, which makes it difficult to film, but is really cool to look at. And everything you need to control the device is right here on the front panel. The only thing not on this panel would be the tape player on the side and the auxiliary audio outputs on the back. But basically your day-to-day -day operation, volume control, tuning, input select is all gonna be here. So on the left here, you've got a knob where you can select phonograph, CD, auxiliary, which would be the aux input, uh, iPad, iPod, whatever you want, and then FM radio is the far right there. Um, here you've got a switch that is FM or Bluetooth, 
you've got the tuning adjustment here and you just keep turning it as you can see the dial at the top rotates to whatever frequency you want you've got your headphone jack here and your auxiliary input right there and here is your volume control um, open and close CD player is right there on and off to power the unit is right there your transport controls are right here play pause forward back that would be for the CD player only stop program and repeat so all of these controls are for the CD all of the controls and the way this is laid out is very art deco I think it's a very very cool design right here you've got a light that indicates stereo or Bluetooth depending on how you're connected play for the CD player program if you've got a program running for the CD player and if you're on repeat the instruction manual shows you the various options and how to connect. I have to say I'm very impressed with the finish of the wood, the design of it. I like the fact that the lid has a lip. I like the fabric on the speaker grills. I like the design of the front panel. I like the controls. It's just got a good overall look and feel. Kind of like an aviator kind of a theme. Almost like a Spirit of St. Louis kind of a theme to it. Very, very, very cool. I love the fact that the lid stays up by itself when you lift it. If you don't go fast like that, sometimes you need to make sure that this is braced here. And then to let it go, you just lift it, push back on it gently, and set it down. Really cool. Hinges feel solid. Everything feels very high quality. So the tone arm has a typical release mechanism like that. You can select your three speeds right down there below. And it's got this wonderful assist so you can rotate the stylus over the record. And then using this lever, you can gently lower it like that. And here's the 45 RPM spacer. It sits in there just like that. Okay, I'm going to play a record now. When you put in a full-sized vinyl 33 RPM disc, make sure you edge it down in the back like that, and then rest it gently on the turntable. Make sure that the release is released. You can lift the lever here, and then rotate the tone arm over the disc. It'll start automatically. Then you can gently lower the stylus onto the record. Okay, I can tell you, just listening to it for a few seconds, the sound is very warm, it's very full, it's very well balanced. The speakers have a good frequency response. If you look at the specifications, it, for the vinyl, I think it's 60 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So essentially the range of human hearing, um, but again, just great warm tone. It's got a great sound to it. Um, not only would this be a good conversation piece and a beautiful piece of furniture, but it's amazingly high quality sound as well. I'm very, very impressed. I really like the gentle you know, lift mechanism and descend mechanism for the stylus. And uh, it's just got a great sound to it. Everything seems very well built. It seems like they took pride in it. When I unpackaged it, I was impressed with the level of detail they went to protect not only the stylus and the tone arm, the whole mechanism was locked. They just took good care that by the time it made it to you, it was ready to be enjoyed for a lifetime. Really a high quality unit. So far, I love this thing. Okay, now I'm going to test the 45. So I'm going to put the 45 RPM spacer right there. I'm going to place my 45 RPM record right there. I'm going to change the speed to 45. Then I'm going to play it just like any other record. And here we go. Let's listen to how this sounds. Now one thing that 45s have an issue with on a lot of these players is that the auto reject or the auto stop mechanism stops before you get to the center of the 45. So let's go ahead and test this and see if this will let us play to the end of the 45. This will be a big deal breaker for the other players and a deal maker for this unit. Will it play to the end or will it auto stop before it gets to the end? All right, you guys, we got a winner on our hands. It made it all the way to the run out groove and didn't auto reject and auto stop the disc. It auto stopped when it got to the run out groove, which is exactly what you want. A lot of these players, will just stop near like two-thirds into the 45, especially on these EP45s. So that's a really good sign. That is a deal maker right there. All right, now let's have a listen to some digital audio. We'll turn it to CD. I've already got my CD in. All the controls are up here. Let's go ahead and play. See how that sounds. 
very impressive sound quality. When you're tuning the radio, you'll notice that the little light that says ST slash BT lights up when it gets stereo. That's stereo slash Bluetooth. And in the radio function, it's telling you when it's got a stereo audio signal. Again, this is a feature you only see on high-end equipment, so this is very impressive. Which you can hear it. You're not going to get an accurate representation until you hear it for yourself. Very full, a lot of bass, very rich, warm tone. Now let's see how easy it is to set up the Bluetooth. So first we turn the knob to FM slash Bluetooth, then we flip the switch to Bluetooth mode. I'm looking at my phone right now. You can use any Bluetooth device. I've turned on Bluetooth and it's going to search for available devices. So let's see how long this takes and what pops up. I just flipped the switch on. The Bluetooth light on the display is flashing and now I get a device pop up saying Wooden Music Center. So I'm guessing that's us. And it is connected. It was as simple as that. Now when I've got Bluetooth connected I can't resist myself. I really really want to play some old time radio on this old time radio. Let's see how it sounds. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with old Johnny. Okay, and leaving no stone unturned, we've turned the selector switch to auxiliary. We're going to play the tape player, so let's go ahead and listen to how good that sounds. Sticking the tape in, it'll auto start. <laughs> Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. That is the Victrola 6-in-1 Nostalgic Entertainment Center. Great unit, and you know what? The price is amazing too. If you look at Bed Bath & Beyond, Best Buy, Amazon, you will see that you can buy this unit for a lot less money than you would expect. If you like this video, would like to see more like it, or would like to check out some of our other videos where we review vintage recording technology, vintage records, and a whole lot of other cool stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. We'd love to have you along for the journey. Well, that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching, and happy record hunting. We'll see you next time. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. Definitely hit subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. And you know what? We go live and we give away record players from time to time. So if you want to be a part of that, make sure you not only subscribe, but hit that bell notification so you don't miss those live notices. Because we no longer post most of our live broadcasts. You have to be there during the live. And again, we do give away record players. So if you want to be a part of that, definitely do that. So that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.